Okay, the, um, the kind of the Cadillac system of biometrics, you know, in principle, this has the best equal error rates and, and all that is the uh, iris scan. So the iris is the colored part of your uh, eye here. Uh, and this part is, there's essentially no genetic influence at all. It's considered a chaotic process. Identical twins would have completely uncorrelated uh, you know, iris patterns. Um, so, and it's permanent, you know, it's stable, it develops very early and very stable throughout your life from that point on. So it seems to have basically all the properties, except, you know, there's an issue about how do you measure it, okay? Maybe that's not quite so easy. Uh, history here is kind of interesting. I don't know how anybody in 1936 could have been thinking about iris scanning. You know, they must have just looked at the eye and said, well, those look different. Maybe we could measure something there. But certainly the technology wasn't even close to being there. I forget which of the James Bond films, but there's at least one from the 80s which has some iris scanning, or at least they look at the eye and do some scan based on the eye for uh, admission to some, you know, some bad guy's uh, lab or something. Uh, 1986, okay, first patents appeared. Why is that an important date when patents start appearing? What does that tell you? Somebody has a demonstrable system. Uh, yeah, it doesn't mean it's any good. A lot of patents are worthless. <laughs> but it does mean somebody's thinking about making money. Making money, okay? They want to protect their invention. So they're thinking about ways to you know, make money out of this. So it looks like the technology is getting close to being feasible. Okay, those things that are not used, this is really the technique that's used. This guy, John Dogman, who was a, uh, I think he was an academic at Cambridge University. Uh, he's got a website, you know, you go there and he can tell you how great this is, tell you're sick of reading about how great it is. Um, but it's certainly the approach that's used today, all right? Okay, so a system would be something like this. You just get your head close, right? And, you know, that, that is sort of easy from, from the user's point, point of view. But this thing's trying to get a photo of your eye, you know, zero in on where the eye is, get a black and white photo of that. Uh, and then it does some fancy math. So using polar coordinates does this fancy uh, wavelet transform, which if you've ever done any image processing or speech processing or whatever, uh, Fourier transforms, you know, it's, it's very similar to that. Just a little different math behind it. The bottom line is you end up here with a 256 byte iris code. So that's how many bits? A lot. It's a lot of bits. Okay, 2,048 bits. Okay, so that's good uh, because it gives us a lot to compare. Okay, so. <coughs> what prevents you from taking a picture of someone's eye? What's that? What prevents you from taking a picture of someone's oh, Okay, so we'll get to that. that we'll keep that, hold that on yeah, for a second. Uh, okay, now how do we compare two of these, right? So we have an iris scan that's stored away in the database for this user, and this one's claiming to be this user, so we get a new iris scan, how do we compare those two? Okay, well, what's the simplest thing you could do if you had two strings of bits? What's the easiest way to compare them? Just count how many places where they're different, okay? That's really all we're gonna do here. Okay, we're gonna look at the distance between these two guys and define it to be the number of bits that don't match divided by the total number of bits. So in this case, how many bits don't match between these two strings? Well, the first, is the same, second's different, third is different, fourth is different. Everyone but the first don't match. So three of the four do not match. Uh, how about this case, which ones don't match? I think it's just these two guys here, right? Don't match, so two of the six, or one third is the distance. Okay, so for a perfect match, exactly the same, what's the distance? Zero, okay? There's no, none that don't match, okay? So zero would be a perfect match. And if you took two random strings of bits, what would you expect the distance to be? One half, because there's a 50% chance each of them match, right? So half of them match, half of them don't. Okay, now, uh, for, you know, in theory, the same iris is supposed to have a distance of 0 0.08. Uh, random is 0.5, so they say set the threshold at 0.32, anything less than that considered a match, anything above that is not a match. Yeah? Does every uh, system produces 2048 uh, bit iris 
Yeah. Is it a standard? Like if uh, I don't. Uh, well, I mean, this is the company that produces, as far as I know, produces these devices, right? So this is basically their approach. It, it, you, you certainly could use other parameters, but that's what they chose. Uh, okay, and again, this is all from like John Dogman's website. <laughs> okay, so uh, these are the various fraud rates for different uh, uh, thresholds that you could set. Now, that kind of makes sense, right? You set the threshold lower. That means it's closer to being a perfect match. The fraud rate should be lower. And that's what you see. Fraud rate's higher. Fraud rate's, it's very small in all cases. Okay. Uh, this is the equal error rate, 0.34. Now, uh, on the previous slide, we said use 0.32, right, as the threshold. So 0.32 would give you a fraud rate of about, you know, 1 in 10 million or something like that. But what would the uh, insult rate be? Well, that's the equal error rate, right? So we make the broad rate go north, the equal error, the insult rate has to go south, right? So the insult rate has to be a little higher than this, right? Does that make sense? Why would you do that? Well, you probably want to make it harder for somebody to break in. And you know, the insult rate is still probably one in 100,000 or something. So you know, you can authenticate 100,000 times, and one of those you're going to have to give your eye twice, you know, get a picture taken. You can live with that just to increase the, you know, to make the fraud that much harder. So that's typically what's done. You wouldn't really use this, you'd set it a little bit in, in practice. Okay, now these are the distributions. So here's a bunch of cases where you took the same iris, you know, took two different scans of it and compared those. And these are the cases where you took two different irises and computed their score or their distance, all right? Now just looking at the picture, why does that look good? <laughs> if you're trying to design a biometric, you see these two distributions, you say, aha, I've got something here. This, this giant distribution. Yeah, okay, because where can you make an error? The error occurs at the overlap between the two distributions. I can draw a line right here, and it looks like they don't overlap. They do just a little bit, though, because it's not quite the resolution. But you can almost separate the distributions completely. And the fact that you can do that says you could draw, set a threshold, and never make an error. Almost never make an error. Okay, so the picture kind of says it all. Okay, so how about iris scan? We want to attack this iris scan system. What, what could we do? Go get Alice's eye. <laughs> okay, uh, no, okay. So you're Tom Cruise. You're in Mission Impossible. What are you going to do? Uh, conceivably, okay, you could. <laughs> wow, that's uh, someone wants to break in that bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably cheaper ways. Okay, but conceivably you could, you know, take a picture of somebody's eye and make a contact lens. Like, oh, hey, I need pictures of people's irises for a school project. There you go. Okay, <laughs> sounds good to me. So, yeah, I mean, you could probably get a high-quality picture and, uh, yeah. It's really easy to get them from their optometrist. They have to take a picture every time they go for an eye exam every year, every two years. So do they actually take a picture? I, mean, I have a picture oh, okay. of email. Oh, wow. I didn't mean I, I could have saved some money. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So, okay, those are all, you know, good things. So, a picture. Okay, so now you're the person designing this iris scan system. Somebody's going to take a picture and break your system, a picture of somebody's eye. How can we prevent that attack? Make sure the eye is real. How's that going to tell you it's real? If you shine the light? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so the pupil dilates or contracts, right? So you could shine just a little bit of light, probably not even to the point where it's visible and the pupil would contract, and you could just make sure that happens. That's very good. Um, anything else you could do? <coughs> well, that's an easy one, right? So that's, I mean, that's probably a, a very good approach. The problem is, what does that do to the cost of your system? Well, it makes it a little more expensive. So is it worth building that in? Because you're competing with passwords, which are free, so you got to worry about you know, whether it's uh, worth that additional cost or not. Okay, so a good photo. And actually, this does work. A good photo of the eye. There's a famous uh, 
National Geographic uh, cover photo. Uh, this was on the cover of National Geographic, I think in the late 1970s, this woman's photo. This was, picture was taken in Afghanistan. Shortly thereafter, the Soviets invaded and chaos you know, reigned in Afghanistan for decades. They went back, to, the photographers went back to Afghanistan you know, uh, um, just a few years ago uh, looking for this person, okay? And they found this person, okay? And she said she remembered somebody coming and taking her picture, but she had never seen the magazine. She couldn't remember who they were, you know, so she wasn't sure what, what, what ever happened there. So, you know, is it the same person or not? So what they did is they took uh, iris scan, <laughs> they took the photo, took an iris scan of the photo, and it was a match. Okay, so it actually does work. In that case, you would not want to shine the light on it, at least to the photo there. <laughs> 